Thank you for, uh, for introducing me like that. I'm very happy to be here today. This is the first time that I'm presenting this topic. Well, I'm a dietetic intern. I started, I started my rotations in March and I'm almost done with everything. So I'm very happy to, to be here today. My name is Stephanie De La Fuente. I'm almost done with my rotations. A little bit of my background is that I'm a dietitian from my country. I'm from Chile, South America, but I'm trying to work as a as a registered dietitian here. So I did a little bit of nutrition education before, and I also did that here. So I'm very happy and I'm thankful, thankful that I got the opportunity to be here today. So let's move on to our, our outline. So I divided this presentation in six different parts. I will talk about a little bit about healthy lunch, why it is important to eat a healthy lunch or a healthy meal. I will also talk about my plate. What are the different types of lunch boxes? Because everyone, every single lunch box is different. How should I organize my lunch box? Some tips and ideas and which one is safe for me? And we will finish this presentation with a round of questions and answers, which will be interesting because you can interact with us. So a little bit of background. I just want to explain a little bit about the importance of the healthy eating, why it is important for us to get a healthy eating. We always say that, of course, I want to get a healthy weight, but I think it's more than that. A healthy eating will help us to get a lower risk of different chronic diseases, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and also some types of cancers. But also it helps with the digestive system because healthy eating involves a lot of fiber and fiber help us with the, our digestive system. Also, we can get stronger bones because we can get enough calcium from our diet also stronger muscles, which is important to get them uh, to get stronger muscles from the protein in our diet. And also it helps us to live longer. This is the best one. I love that one. Why? Because when we eat certain foods like fruits and vegetables, which have antioxidants, that will help us to live longer. That's amazing, right? But now why it is important to get a healthy lunch? Some For some people, the lunch is the main meal of the day. For me, at least, based on my cultural traditions, lunch is the biggest meal on my day. So lunch gives you energy for the rest of your day. For example, if you feel tired or if you're sleepy, lunch gives you that energy. It wakes up your brain so you can concentrate for the rest of the, for the day or the afternoon and you can be more productive in your job. And also taking a break from work and enjoy a meal with your peers can help you to get better engagement with your peers and also to socialize. We are social humans, so we need to talk with other people, to talk with them while we are eating. I think that's a very healthy lifestyle to share with other people. I know that some of you or most of you are familiar with this picture. This is the My Plate. This is the USDA guideline from the US. And for me, I like it a lot because it's very simple to understand. It's very easy to, to see, like it, if you see it, since if you are an, a child, a preschooler, or if you are a, an elderly people, you can understand this picture. It provides a visual representation of the different food groups and it's designed for the general population. It emphasizes in fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and also dairy. And we can see here in this picture that the, veg the vegetables are the biggest, like the, the most important food group here. But also we have, as I mentioned, fruits, whole grains, proteins, and dairy. So a little bit of my plate. When we talk about fruits and vegetables, we talk about fruits that, I mean, about foods that have fiber, that have vitamins, minerals, and it's very important to eat the five different colors. 
We have five different groups, which are uh, white and tan, yellow and orange, red, purple and blue, and green. So if we eat all these colors and fruits and vegetables, we will get enough vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber, and a lot of benefits from them. About grains. Eating mostly whole, whole grains, which I recommend eating whole grains, it helps you to get better nutrition. Whole grains have more fiber, more iron, and more vitamin B complex, which is really good. It's better than the refined um, grains. Then we have the protein. For example, your chicken, your meat or beef, your turkey, eggs, etc. That help us with our muscles, with our bones too and to get like a better uh, a better nutrition and also to get better satiation. And also the dairy that is here in the corner. Three servings a day of dairy help us to get more calcium in our diet. Calcium help us with our bones, but also to get a better uh, heart health because it's seen that calcium helps with our blood pressure. So eating a little bit of everything will help us to get a healthy eating and also a healthier life. Now, I just want to talk about like the different types of lunch boxes that we can find in the grocery stores. These two different, I mean, these ones are the, the same ones. These are, this is a lunch box, which is a plastic one with different containers. And this is very helpful for those people that prefer to eat some cold items. This is not very helpful for, for um, food that you wanna eat like hot. So I really recommend this kind of lunchbox when you are getting like, for example, a sandwich with some vegetables and fruit. And then you can put on the side or on the top an ice packet and that will maintain the, the cold items with a, um, proper temperature. Then we have these other ones. We have the regular lunch bag, which isolates the cold or the hot or the heat, but I will always prefer like to get a regular lunch box, which you can put some ice packet, ice packs or just to keep them warm. This helps, but not that much because it can transfer the, the, the heat to other foods. For example, if you wanna eat a a hot item here. It can transfer the, the heat to the other items. So that's why I don't like it that much, but of course you can get that. It's, it's easy to use and it's also cheap. So it's up to you. We also have this one that is the stainless steel um, lunchbox. I like it a lot because it maintains the cold very well. And you can also put a nice pack uh, on the bottom of the tray and it will maintain the temperature really well. So it is, it is really good. This one is like an interesting one. This works with, it's an, it's an electric lunch box. So you can use it, it has a bug. So you can just plug it 15 to 20 minutes before you are gonna eat. And it heats, heat up your food. It takes a long time, 15 to 20 minutes. So you have to make sure that you are heating up your food before taking your break, okay? But it's really good, it has, it has different compartments. You can maintain your hot items in it and also cold items in it. So it, it is really good. And it, it's cheap, it costs like between 15 and $20 on Amazon. So I think it's, that's a good um, idea when you don't have a microwave uh, in your office or at your job. So you can use those, uh, this kind of lunchbox in case you don't have anything to, to heat your food. And then we have the, the regular ones. These are like the famous Tupperware or just a plastic container. It's just, you can just put one item in it. It doesn't maintain the, the hot or the cold temperature. So I will always recommend, as I mentioned, if you have cold items in there to put an ice packet in it. So now I'm gonna talk about how we have, we, how we can organize our lunch. So, all of the examples that I will provide is based on my plate. So 
all the foods that I'm including in my lunch has these five different groups, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, protein, and dairy. I will start with the vegetables because it's the biggest group. So let's go. Look at that, that looks beautiful. So we can eat cooked veg vegetables, we can eat fresh vegetables. It depends on you, on your preferences, on what kind of flavors do you like? So it's only based on your imagination, what you wanna prepare. About food vegetables, you can make them steamed, sauteed or grilled or air fried. It depends on your imagination. So some of the examples of these vegetables are carrots, squash, bell peppers, etc. I like to prepare the squash with bell peppers and a little bit of broccoli with a little bit of uh, soy sauce, just a little bit because it has like so uh, a high amount of sodium, so just a little bit, or I use a low uh, sodium one. It goes really good and I can mix it with rice or with other kind of protein at, as chicken and it tastes really good. But also if you wanna eat some kind of fresh uh, um, vegetables, you can eat lettuce, tomatoes, celery, whatever you want. I will always recommend to get some fresh salads as well because it has a good amount of fiber and it also has a good amount of water. But this is a big one, healthy dressings. I know that here we can find a lot of different dressings which have like a high amount of fat. So it's better to get something healthier. I recommend vinaigrette, olive oil, vinegar, or my favorite one is just lemon, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and I mix it all together because I'm kind of like more a sour person. So I like that. And it's really tasty and you can just eat it whatever you want. It's very fresh. Now, well, the summer is ending, but still you can still get in it every day. Of course, we always recommend a plate of um, salads but also vegetables, cooked vegetables with your meals. That's a good option. And hopefully you can get like more ideas now on how to prepare the different vegetables. Some benefits of the vegetables. It may contribute to reduce, to reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Why? Because it's low in fat and calories. So it helps us with the satiation because it has fiber. It also helps us to reduce the blood cholesterol which this is amazing. If you have some high cholesterol, eating more vegetables may reduce the risk of having a stroke or any other kind of um, conditions. And also it's a good source of many other nutrients, zinc, fiber, as I mentioned, folate, vitamin A and C. It's a really good uh, food group. Now I'm gonna talk about protein and whole grains. Why did I mix these two, these two groups together? Because usually when we prepare our lunchbox, we have the main meal, which contains the protein and the whole grains. And then on the side, we put the vegetables and put the fruit and, and the other items, but we always put protein and the whole grains together. So I will give you some ideas on it. Some examples of protein, we have the chicken, your fish, your meat, your legumes, eggs, etc. And we can prepare complex or simple food items. For example, this is a just a, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. This is just a tuna salad sandwich. This is very easy. You will take maybe only five minutes to prepare it. It's very easy. But of course, I would recommend to use the whole grain uh, bread. But then we have some rice with uh, salmon, which is also healthy. Well, this plate has a lot of rice. So I will always recommend to put like maybe one cup of rice or three quarters a cup of rice, something like that. So we can like maintain our um, healthy portions, right? We also have pasta here with a little bit of marinara sauce, some tortillas, I think it is with eggs. These are healthy recommendations. Some uh, benefits of the protein. It helps us with our muscle development. For example, if you are doing some exercise, it helps us to recover our muscles. It also helps to maintain a healthy weight because as I mentioned before, 
protein help us with the sati satiation. So we don't feel hungry after eating them. It also improves with the immune system because protein helps to build these good cells in our body to fight with other bacteria or other um, bad things that occurs in our body. And also the protein foods provides you different vitamins and minerals like iron, zinc, and also omega-3s. Omega-3s helps us with our brain development. About whole grains, we have a lot of benefits too. Reduce the risk of heart disease because it has fiber, right? The fiber also contributes to a healthy digestion. If you have some issues with your digestion, it's always great to eat some kind of um, whole grain products and water. I always have my water with me. That's a really serves to maintain a healthy digestion. Also may help with, with management. Same thing, satiation. You won't feel hungry after eating them. And also reduce the risk of different coronary diseases because it's healthy. Now, what, what happens if you are vegetarian or vegan? What kind of protein can you eat? I don't know if some of you are uh, following this kind of lifestyle, being vegetarian or vegan. And if you can provide some examples of proteins that you eat, it would be great. You can put it on, on the chat. But uh, I can give you some examples here. Look at this one. The, the, most, the biggest one that has 66, 76 grams of protein in 100 grams of if, uh, this food is the spirulina powder. I know that no one is going to eat uh, 100 grams of this powder. That's almost impossible, but it, it can work as a supplement, right? Now, well, I will skip the hemp seeds. I don't want to talk about that, but I can talk about the pumpkin seeds. It has 40 grams of protein in 100 grams of uh, this product, which is good. Again, nobody's going to eat 100 grams but you can always mix it with your yogurt or in your breakfast or in any in, in your salads as well. You can mix it with, with other different foods. The most common that usually vegetarian and vegan people eat are tofu, lentils, beans, mung beans, green peas. Those have good sources. Those are good sources of protein. And you usually eat 100 grams of lentils or 100 grams of tofu. So you will get like between 12 or 10 grams of protein in each uh, portion of 100 grams, which is still a good source because the regular protein has almost the same amount of protein in, a, in the same amount of uh, grams, the same portion. Almonds, cashews, peanuts also have a lot of protein. So I will always recommend eat them as a snacks. For example, if you feel hungry between lunch and dinner or between breakfast and lunch, it's always good to, you can eat a handful of peanut, uh, I mean of almonds or cashews that provides you enough protein and it's a really good and healthy snack. These are some examples of a uh, lunch uh, for vegetarian and vegan people or also for regular people if you, I mean for, for a people that has a, a normal diet. If sometimes we can mix it with, with tofu or we can prepare, if we feel like creatives, we can make these kind of black bean burgers. You just have to cook them, the, the black beans or the red kidney beans, put it on the blender all together. On the side, you can make some uh, kind of vegetables salted, and then you can mix them with, uh, with the beans. And then you can just put it on the oven for 20 minutes and they will get done. So it's very easy, it's very healthy. You are mixing proteins, a little bit of carbohydrates and also vegetables. So it, it is a really good source of protein. You are having protein, vitamins, minerals and carbohydrates, as I said before. Here we have egg muffins, which again, is a really easy um, um, preparation. But the thing is that if you don't eat eggs, I won't recommend it because some people, some vegan people, they don't eat eggs. And it is mixed with broccoli. I think this is a mix between eggs and broccoli. Yes. And then here, this is another kind of lunch. We have the tofu. Tofu is very common on vegetarian people because it has a lot of protein and usually vegetarian and vegan people need to get like a lot of source, a lot of um, 
or tofu or soybeans or soy meat, uh, a lot of soy because soy has a lot of protein, right? So eating tofu with a little bit of vegetables, it also has seeds and quinoa. This one look this lunch looks really healthy and also delicious. And also it has a little bit of soy sauce, which gives you that flavor like that different flavor, like more more delicious, more tasty. So that's uh, another good one that you can get for lunch. Now talking about fruits, and um, our next group. This, <laughs> now I feel hungry. I really wanna eat a fruit. <laughs> so it's always better to eat the whole, the whole and fresh fruit. Why? Because most of the fruits have all the fiber, vitamins and minerals on the, uh, on the skin of the fruit. Of course, not with the bananas or with the watermelon, but of course with, I don't know, with apples, with pears, you may eat the whole fruit, okay? Some other options also are canned fruit or frozen fruits. These are very good too. If you are uh, um, buying canned fruit, I will always recommend to get those ones that have no sugar added or just a lower sugar. Um, canned fruit because it has a lot of sugar, a lot of added sugar. So I will always recommend to get the the zero sugar. And it's important to always include a fruit in your lunch. This is a good moment in the day to get something healthy, to get fruits because we usually forget to get it, to get some fruits. So it all it, it is always a good idea to get it for lunch or just to save it as a snack for later. But don't forget your fruits are very important. It is always recommended to get at least two, two portions of fruit a day. Some examples are strawberries, apples, oranges, pineapples, grapes, etc. It depends on the season. So as I mentioned, it's really good to eat fruits because it also has a lot of benefits it reduces the risk of heart, heart disease, including heart attack and a stroke. It also protects to certain types, types of cancer, and it helps to increase the amount of fiber and, pot and potassium in your diet. So I don't know if you saw from before that fiber, it's a big one here in the healthy eating, right? And then we have our dairy. I know some people don't eat dairy, some people are intolerant, so we will see different options as well for you. On dairy, we will always prefer to get fat-free or low-fat dairy because dairy has a lot of fat and it's saturated fat, which does the opposite of fiber. So we will always recommend to get the fat-free or low-fat. And also, you can include it on your fruit, as a yogurt, for example, or cottage cheese, or as a drink. Smoothie is a good idea, or just drinking the milk. It's a good idea, it's a good option. Some examples that I have here, milk, yogurt, cheese, lactose-free milk, if you are intolerant, cottage cheese, etc. Some of the benefits of our dairies, it helps to build bones, teeth, and muscles, this is a good one because we often, and we as women, we can have osteoporosis in the future. So dairy help us to reduce the risk of osteoporosis. It, it also maintain a healthy blood pressure because it has calcium and calcium provides that benefit to reduce the blood pressure. It also has vitamin D, some milks comes fortified, which maintain the normal levels of calcium and phosphorus in our body. As I mentioned, fat-free or low-fat dairy have low saturated fat, which that's really good because it helps to avoid all that fat in our bloodstream and also prevent osteoporosis. Oh, and I forgot to say it. Eating or drinking three portions a day a dairy uh, will help us. Uh, it provides us the, um, the, the full amount of calcium that we need uh, throughout the day. And you can mix it between milk, cheese, or yogurt. 
if you are a vegetarian or vegan, what kind of dairy should I consume? Of course, dairy won't be on your diet, but I can offer you, for example, taking some calcium fortified juices, for example, this one. I just uh, try to not to show the, um, the brand, I mean the, the name. So, but you can see on the, on the picture or in, on, on the bottle that says 45 on calcium and vitamin D or something like that. Soy, uh, soy milk or any other fortified plant-based milk has enough amount of calcium. It has the same amount of calcium as a glass of milk. So that's really good. I recommend the soy milk just because it has a higher, a higher amount of protein. If you drink almond milk, for example, almond milk, it's just like the water, a little bit of calcium, and that's it. It doesn't have protein. It doesn't have carbohydrates. It doesn't have anything else besides the calcium. And tofu. Tofu is a good one. It's a good source of um, calcium, but also uh, protein. So now, I know that some of the people, they don't feel comfortable doing the meal prepping. They don't feel that the kitchen is their best friend. But we need to see the benefits. We have a lot of benefits doing our own meals. You can save money. When you go to work and you go to get lunch, like, I don't know, in your one hour break, you probably, you can spend like more than $10 every day just in lunch. So of course, if you do your meal prepping at home, you can save money. You can minimize the food waste because you will see what is in your in your fridge. We usually save some leftovers and then we say, oh, it's okay because tomorrow I will get something across the street and on my job. It doesn't matter. But then all the, left all the leftovers will stay there for days and days and days. And what's gonna happen? You have to throw that out. So, if you feel comfortable in your kitchen, doing your meal prep, you will see that you have enough food, healthy foods in your fridge and you can use them. And of course, you will get more options to get healthy foods at home more than in the streets because you know what you are buying in the grocery stores and you know what you want to eat and you are preparing them. You know if it's organic or if it's fresh, you know what you are preparing and the amount of oil that you are using, the amount of salt that you are using, you are not putting any additives. So it's the healthier option always to prepare your own foods. Some of the best options for meal prepping. If it's faster, of course, I would recommend frozen vegetables because even if you use the fresh ones, you can save them in different Ziploc bags and you can put it in the freezer. And then when you have, I don't know, you have a short amount of time to cook something, you can just pick some of your Ziploc bags and then you can just start cooking and it's going to be very fast. I do that and it really helps. You can use starchy or non-starchy vegetables. The non-starchy are, for example, lettuce, tomatoes, carrots, and the starchy ones are corn, potatoes, etc. Best option, whole grains. I will always recommend the uh, whole grains because of the amount of fiber, of iron, and also vitamin B complex. Lean protein, of course, chicken, your chicken, or you can eat uh, salmon. Salmon has a certain amount of fat, but it's a healthy fat. It has omega-3s and that works as an antioxidant. And also it works for your heart. And also you can eat uh, about the lean protein. You can use, for example, a uh, pork loin. That's a lean protein, which you can use too. Whole fruits, as I mentioned, whole fruits. If you eat, for example, the entire pear, that's better than uh, taking the skin off. I will always recommend the whole pear, the whole apple. And if you want to choose uh, to eat um, the canned fruit, make sure that it has zero added sugar. And nuts and seeds, th this is the best snack that you can have, but also you can mix it with your, yog with your yogurt if you want. You can mix it with another kind of foods in your salads as well. 
So this is a good source of protein and also healthy fats. These are some tips and ideas for, for your lunch. For me, it's better to mix all the ideas, mix all the ingredients that you have in your kitchen. Everything is in your, is in your imagination. Of course, we want to, I don't know, sometimes to, to follow a, a recipe, but sometimes you just want to mix your ingredients that you have in your kitchen, right? Everything is about in your mind, like whatever you want to prepare. Of course, I like to mix different colors so that can look like kind of attractive to, to you. Your brain will say, oh, this looks attractive because it has different colors. It has different textures. So I really, I, I really want to eat it. And of course, try to avoid repeating the same lunch. Because if you are eating a sandwich every day, you will get tired. So I will always recommend to try something new, make a, a new a new meal, try to avoid that, to repeat the same lunch every day. Include your favorite meals and foods, in, include your favorite vegetables, include your favorite fruits. Don't forget fruit. I know that it's hard to get a fruit every day for lunch or, or for dinner, but please just remember that Fruits help you a lot and you need to eat at least two portions a day. Try to prepare your lunch box the night before. I know it is hard. I have a son and for me, it's hard to, to do that, like everything to do, to prepare everything the night before. But if you do that the next day in the morning, when you are running out or are running late or are, you are doing everything fast, you will get less like, Let's put uh, less like healthy options. You will get like something something simple to prepare, and you won't get enough time to to see what you are doing because you are doing everything fast. So, I prefer to do everything the night before. And to avoid monotony, change some spices, dressings, and condiments because you need to to try different flavors. It's better that than eating the same flavors, eating the same foods all the time. But now, how can I keep my lunch safe? I know that we are still in the summer, that our food can get like hot super quick. So we need to get these three key points. The first one is let the food, the, 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 um, the food cool, maintain it the night before in the fridge. Keep it cool when we get our lunchbox using the ice packs and keep them cool. And then when we go to our office or to our job, we can put our lunchbox in the fridge in our office as soon as possible. And then we can reheat the food. It is very important to keep the temperatures in, a correct, in the correct range. I will explain that later in the next slides. Here we go. So we have a danger zone here, which the bacteria may feel comfortable to multiplicate and to just build their own things. So it is recommended to maintain the temperatures below 40 degrees or over 140 degrees. That's the danger zone between 40 and 140. So how can we avoid that? Just letting the food cool in the fridge, using the ice packs, and then reheating it as soon as possible when we can, but avoiding this window between the 40 degrees and the 140. So if you don't have any microwave available, and if you don't have enough to to buy the, the electric lunchbox, I will recommend to reheat the leftovers before packing it, but you have to eat it as soon as possible. I mean, like between two or three hours after, not waiting that much. Like you can wait six hours after you reheat your leftover because it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna get uh, bad and it it can have like different bacteria. 
And it's always better to keep the food cool until you can reheat it in a microwave. This is the key. Always uh, keep your food cool and using the ice packs. So I think everybody must use ice packs in your lunchbox to maintain cool your lunch. And just make sure if in your facility or in your office, you have a microwave and a fridge that will help a lot to see what kind of lunch box, uh, lunch box you have to buy or what kind of lunch you can bring. Because sometimes if you see that you don't have anything like your environment doesn't help, you must need to get like just cold items such as for example, sandwiches or stuff like that or salads. So to get our uh, lunch safe, we need to see this sign. This symbol indicates the compliance by the manufacturer that the product is safe to be used to heat the food in a microwave. Why? Because some of the plastic products have chemicals. And when we heat that plastic in the microwave, those chemicals can go into your food. So it is always recommended to see the package to see the lunch box on the on the bottom, it's always the um, the symbol, and you may see that it has it has like a picture of a microwave or an oven with these uh, with these lines. So now to summarize a little bit what we were talking about today, the lunch is one of the most important meals of the day, giving you energy energy to finish your day. Your body will appreciate if you eat the five components of the my plate, fruits, vegetables, grains, uh, dairy, and protein. I think I was forgetting. And you can get a lot of benefits eating all these components. You know, uh, vitamins, minerals, fiber, uh, healthy fats, protein. And you have a lot of options to choose what kind of container you want to use for lunch. We have a lot of options, affordables, depending on, on your budget, but just make sure that it has the, um, the symbol on the bottom of the lunchbox. Just make sure of that. And of course, keep your food within the same the safe temperature range between uh, less than uh, 40 degrees or over 140 to avoid this bacterial overgrowth. Now, if you have any questions, I can answer all your questions. I'm very happy to answer all of them. So go ahead. <laughs>